this is Splice. Hi, everyone. I'm December from Excel Hub. Um, I'm, in, I'm a communication manager. Um, thank you for taking the interest in, in uh, my session. And thanks, Alan, for inviting me. I don't know why, but thank you. Um, OK, so the, the there's no slides. Uh, I'm going to talk about what uh, Myan, uh, Myanmar journalists in Excel, uh, what, we, what they need support with, and here's what you can do. Before uh, we start with that, I just want to introduce our organization first. My organization is called um, Exile Hub, and we started um, right after coup. We were born right after coup, and um, we started with you know sending in uh, some funds for media professionals inside Myanmar. We started with sending in press kits, VPNs, full, uh, SIM cards, and funds for you know. Um, detained journalists and family members of uh, detained journalists inside. That's how we started um, in, in 2021, right after coup. And then we thought, okay, after a few months, uh, we didn't become an organization. We just did all of the, the sending in money, press kits, everything uh, through crowdfunding. And we got 85,000 USD something through crowdfunding. And we thought, okay, why don't we become an organization? And uh, so a few months later, we thought, um, because there's so many journalists flying out of Myanmar to Thailand, um, they needed relocation at first, and they needed a place to continue their work, a place to stay, a safe space for them to stay. And... Uh, we started in Bangkok in 2021, where they, you know, uh, first started to uh, come into Bangkok because there was no flights directly from Yangon to uh, Chiang Mai. So it was from Yangon to Bangkok, and we opened a hub. We call it a hub slash safe space where they, where the journalists can work, where they can, you know, uh, stay safely. It was a uh, two, from two weeks to three months maximum for them to, you know, stay at our hub. And that's where I want to show the hub and the video of, you know, our fellows. But yeah, I will send it in the telegram. So, um, and after 2021, we uh, started to expand to Chiang Mai in 2022 with our, um, the uh, safe space and the hub. And in 2023, we expand this year, we expanded to Mesot with two safe spaces uh, for a mixed gender um, safe space. And then um, there's um, only for women journalists uh, uh, safe house in Mesot because uh, the need is more in Mesot. And in, Mesot is a border area uh, between Thailand and, and Myanmar for those who are not familiar with the Myanmar Thai uh, context. Um, so that's how we started, and that's uh, how, how far we have come with the safe spaces and uh, stuff like that. So, um, and what I'm gonna say right now, how you can contribute and what you can do for media journalists in Exile, it's based on our experiences, it's based on what, you know, Exile Hub has gone through for the past two and a half years. Um, what we do is we have three programming, and there's three key aspects to that. And the first is psychosocial support. Um, you know, we, we believe in a holistic uh, approach. First, we started with, you know, shelter, safe space. But, you, you know, journalists, you're quite stubborn. I'm not a journalist myself, but, you know, I can see that. You know, they, they're the frontliners. You know, they, they are taking these horrible, horrible news, and... Nobody was taking care of their mental well-being, you know, and it's a, it was still a stigma for people to, you know, even talk about their, their well-being. And so we started with psychosocial support. Um, we gave, uh, we provide individual counseling, we provide uh, emotional well-being workshops, and there's a quite popular workshop among uh, our community uh, within uh, media professional workers, and that's Resilient Workshop. 
Um, we have had it for like 15, 16 resilient workshops now, and they are mainly uh, operated in um, in Mesot because, you know, like I said, the need is more in Mesot. That's where it's more of a hostile environment in Mesot. So, you know, we... Um, uh, we provide that, and for those who are not interested in speaking of your feelings, express your feelings with the others, we provide uh, pers uh, personal safety workshops, border safety workshops, and um, digital safety workshops. So um, digital safety workshops are not uh, what, what, ex what we in-house are doing. We connect with other organizations that you know, uh, provide digital safety. Again, we, we believe in, because phys physical safety is important, but it is uh, as important as digital safety. So uh, we, uh, we, we try to be uh, holistic with uh, our, our approach. And the last thing is um, vocational training slash uh, personal uh, growth. Because uh, many of the, many of the um, uh, media professionals living here, we have both... Uh, you know, uh, older generation, senior journalists, but we also have those that, you know, just became prof uh, media professionals after coup. So, you know, we believe in um, providing them um, ethical journalism or video editing. How do you do video editing? And the most uh, popular one is uh, podcast trainings. We give podcast trainings and it has been four seasons so far with uh, podcast trainings. I think with Jack and few others they're going to talk about the podcast trainings and um yeah so um those are the things that we do but addition addition to that we do emergency support um it's it's not uh, in my jd it's not in my colleagues jd but um we have um we often speak with our fellows. We call them our fellows, our communities. And, you know, many of them, they lack visa fees. They don't, the, many of the media houses they work at, they don't provide me, uh, visa fees. They don't provide medical insurance, health insurances. So these are the things that they, you know, bring up and they don't have any legal support. So, you know, they come to us, we talk about this, and what we do is that, uh, you know, um, addition to the work that I mentioned, uh, we try to write uh, grants applications for them. Uh, we try to connect with other organizations that, you know, provide legal support, medical support to uh, uh, media uh, professionals. So, um, and, and uh, last year we had a focus group discussions with uh, a few of the, a few, a few media houses and a few editors, chief editors, um, and, you know, we were asking, you know, what do you need? What do you, what, what is that you need, you know? And um, we have a, a research paper on that, and I think it's, we're releasing that soon, and based on that, what they, their needs are uh, mainly medical insurance and uh, um, legal support. In our border, safe, border safety training, we try to include uh, Thai lawyers that you know can speak about how to how to blend in as a as a Thai person in Mesot or how to dress up in Mesot um, to speak about. The uh, because you know we had election in in Thailand you know when to move when not to move around when to move around so stuff like that we include in in uh, uh, our uh, trainings so actually I have so much more and so much details but <laughs> my uh, colleague said you know stop right there that's you know let let the audience engage with you and ask questions so I'm gonna stop right there and if you have any questions. Any comments, any discussions? Go ahead. Uh, you said you had a, um, uh, my name's Hui Yi. Uh, you said you had a safe house uh, for women journalists in Mesot. Uh, can you explain what are the special needs of the, the women journalists that you cater to? Like, uh, why did you feel like a safe house was needed just for them in Mesot? Mm, because, you know, in, in I can, Let's go back to 2021 first. In 2021, uh, you know, uh, journalists were flying uh, from Yangon uh, to Bangkok and then to uh, Chiang Mai directly now. We no longer have a, a housing a hub in Bangkok anymore. We only have 
uh, we shut down in 2023 in Bangkok, and now we have more in Chiang Mai and in Mesa. Uh, the reason why they need more of the uh, housing there is because uh, in 2021, more of a like uh, high profile uh, journalists, people who were at risk, they were flying out. But now they cannot fly out anymore from there. And some of the some of the uh, journalists who have been to jail, who have been detained, you know, they they um, cross uh, the border from um, what do you call it uh, from Myanmar to uh, Mesa, and and they don't. The, some of the media houses, they don't provide any places uh, uh, for these uh, media um, women journalists. And from our findings, based on our experience, they face um, sexual harassment and, you know, verbal harassment at their workplaces or at their, uh, where they uh, stay together. So that's why we, you know, try to um, prioritize women journalists in Mesot because that's where you, they um, uh, cross at first and then maybe they come to Chiang Mai or they go to a, a third country, but most likely stay in Mesa and stay, uh, they stay in um, uh, uh, Mesa and in Chiang Mai. And what they need is that the first thing that we do is we give cash assistance and, you know, uh, if, you know, women, we, uh, we give cash assistance, pads, uh, guidelines of, you know, you say you don't go out after 8 p.m. in Mesa. This is how you you know, this is how you don't walk around in Mesa, stuff like that, rules and re regulations of, you know, Thai laws and how Thai authorities operate. These things we provide at first when they first come into our um, uh, safe houses. If, did that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, so the, the way it was headlined, I was curious to know about that. How can colleagues like us in different parts of the world support you? Oh, there's so many ways to support. You can support us, <laughs> then we can support them. Um, no, um, there's so many ways to support. It depends what kind of support, uh, you know, you want to be supporting. Is it legal? Is it medical? Um, is it, you know, capacity building? Because, you know, uh, we also have language classes uh, in both English and Thai because many of the young, uh, you know, media professionals that become after uh, journalists after coup, they, they need capacity building in both, in, in every, everything, in languages, in podcasts, in video editing, what is uh, ethical uh, journalism, stuff like that. They need that. Um, and also... How you can support? I have a I have a case where we have a case where um, there's this uh, photo journalist and that photo went quite viral. I don't remember the name of it, but um, he is one of our grantees, and you know he wanted to have his photo. Uh, his photo was um, shown in in Europe somewhere. And he couldn't fly, you know, he couldn't fly because he doesn't have any legal documentations. And, and that's not, he's not the only person who doesn't have any legal documentations. I've faced many people, you know, asking for emergency support under uh, legal documentations. They don't have any PIN cards, they don't have any 10 years cards. For those who don't know what 10 years card uh, uh, pink cards, they are, uh, you know, for you to stay legal to, to in, in, in Thailand. It changes all the time. First, in 2021, you're doing some pink cards, and then it, it cost XYZ, and then it increased, it, is, it keeps increasing all the time. So um, you can support in that also, because for a, a media worker to, you know, st um, uh, stay in Chiang Mai, uh, many of the people that we know, they, they, went, they go back to liberated area and they, you know, take news, they do their work, and then they come back to rest, and they come back to do their work. So that type of thing, they need to move around, you know, journalists, they need to move around to uh, take news from, uh, you know, inside Myanmar. So... That is quite difficult. It's like they're stuck in, in a place. They're stuck in Mesa. They're stuck in... Mesa is more hostile uh, than Chiang Mai and Bangkok. So um, for them to move around, they need a le legal documentation. And we have helped um, um, some to, to, you know, apply uh, uh, pink cards and 10 years card. But it's still quite hard because, you know, it's, so, it's getting so expensive. And we don't... 
they open like maybe once a year or twice a year and we always have to like oh when is the window gonna open when are they gonna you know open the uh, opportunities again so it's you know how do you want to support it you can contact me directly too you know do you want to support in medical legal um legal documentations or vocational uh, trainings you know podcast uh there's a few here that support um our podcast trainings and it is successful you know so um uh, you choose what you want to support in there's so many uh, you know that you can support in think uh, did did I answer you? Yeah, okay. Hello, I'm uh, Ulla Hi. from uh, DVB. I, I'm just wondering, do you give support to freelance journalists only or also journalists from established independent media like DVB, Erewari, Mizima? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we do, not only freelancers. Uh, we do support, we have... A few from DVB, Irawadi, big media houses, small media houses, all the time. Um, uh, but the needs are always uh, different. If it's uh, smaller media houses and freelancers, uh, they, you know, um, smaller media houses, they relocate uh, from uh, Myanmar, uh, Myanmar to uh, Thailand. Then we try to, you know, uh, support. Sub you know, like I said, we, we. Uh, Support as in like finding funds for them to relocate, and 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 um, that that's not what actually we do. But you know we, we try because you know th there's such a need for them to you know otherwise it, how can they like you know move to uh, Thailand or even relocate? So um, we uh, we do, we try to support everyone that comes to you know uh, us and ask for um, help whether it's uh, uh, relocation fees or, hey, can I stay at your safe house in, in uh, Chiang Mai or in Mesot a few days? Yes, of course you can. So we have supported so many. Um, I should have the numbers on the slides because I cannot remember. I'm getting old, but I'll give it to you how many. And, you know, there's so many media houses that we have supported and individuals also. Um, hi, uh, this hi. is Nye. I am also the Asian journalist here almost um, 25 months for now in Chiang Mai. Um, thank you, Dizema, for your very great presentation and uh, your work, um, your organization work for the, um, the journalists in Asai. And both like mentally and physically, very helpful, we say. And um, uh, rather, the, the question I would like to add the comments, like, um, as Ms. Dizema mentioned that uh, they, they support different kind of um, uh, to uh, design journalists, but the issue is that there are many journalists here in Chiang Mai and Mesa as well as in Bangkok and um, like uh, most of the support is kind of like uh, likely emergency report, uh, emergency support, but like there are also the professional support like language and uh, podcast training, something like that. But the, the, the deep issue is like, you know, um, drawing at uh, media support for Myanmar media especially. And there are many news media outlets and uh, who rely on the media, newly started media organization as well as the ethnic and regional media organization. And um, they... You know, most of the media organizations, they cannot survive anymore in, in, in here in Thailand. And what's happened to them is they cannot go back to the country. And there are many journalists stuck in both Mesot and Chiang Mai. So um, I would like to request here, there are many of, in this room, many of you are the journalists and um, working in the different countries and um, report about Myanmar because we don't see many reports about Myanmar in international media and that is the one that you can help us uh, to highlight. And also Matt Dizema had a lot of network, uh, many, many journalists, both, both women and men, and um, they have a different story and there are many different story, interesting story that you might be interested in to cover and I think that would be great to um, have a chance to cover about Myanmar journalists as well. Thank you. Thank you, Manjane. I didn't bring my glasses, so I, I didn't know who you were until you said your name. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't have any uh, comment to that because, you know, what you said, it's 
perfect. Any more um, questions, comments? Hello, this Hi. is Eva from DW Academy. Yeah, thank you, December. Quite impressive your presentation. And um, as you know, I know about um, also a lot of. Uh, additional trainings that uh, Exile Hub is um, organizing in Chiang Mai and in Mesot um, around um, yeah, mental well-being and yeah, digital safety that you mentioned earlier, but maybe if there's a little bit more time, maybe you can elaborate on that and uh, share with the audience um, what are those trainings about and why they are needed. Thank you. You mean digital safety, uh, right? Or mental, mental well-being Men as mental well. well-being. I mean, your choice. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, we can start with digital first because mental well-being is quite uh, broad. Um, with digital safety, we, uh, we, because, you know, we hear comments and uh, feedback from journalists all the time. Like, hey, you know, you come and give you as in other other people come and give provide trainings in digital safety but nobody gives them equipment you know it's just uh, there's a theory and then there's no practice and there's no money for that so we do connect with some of the some of the organizations to you know provide both uh, equipment and both uh, uh, um, you know um, uh, trainings, so you know um, it can be holistic. We, we try at least, um, and we also, as an organization, me, I am not good with uh, digital at all. Um, so um, just uh, a few months ago, we had for, for our own um, our own organization, we tried to have uh, how do you call it. Um, um, di uh, digital security uh, workshop for our own team because it's important that because we have so many important data in our our laptop at our place you know and how to how to you know keep them safe is something that is very important because you know if it goes leaks then you know it can be very dangerous for other uh, media professionals also so that's digital safety um, mental health. Um, we have forgot to mention that we have a um, in podcast training. Um, we have a season where the the you know the participants talk about in in, in series where they talk about uh, mental well being. Uh, how having a cat is you know is also a therapy. How you know. Um, uh, they talk about that in, in podcast, and we have a page uh, called Mian Charge, and uh, it it is targeted f uh, for audience like uh, journalists to you know read about mental health uh, content because I write half of them and we have the other person writing uh, half of the content. It's so important because you know in in 2021 we in 2021 and early 2022 there's <laughs> Uh, journalists, they don't want to come and, and, and uh, come to our emotional workshops. It's like, what is it? Why should we, why should we express our feelings to one another? Uh, you know, they, they, it's like the others are more important than their feelings. What's going on in Myanmar is more important than their feelings, you know. And it is a stigma around uh, mental health. Not only in Myanmar, I believe it's also in Southeast Asia, you know, speak about your feelings. So, for us, um, from 2021 and early 2022, it was so hard uh, for for journalists to come to our workshops. Uh, but more and more, uh, one uh, one year and a half now, we have first we started with like 10 participants. Barely 10 participants were applying at our, our workshops, and now we have 90, 100, 150 people applying, and we can only choose from 10 people to 15 people to, to attend at our, our workshops. And, you know, through, and we always have these assessment, pre-test, post-test, you know, how were they feeling before this? How were they coping their stress and their trauma and their depression? And how are they coping? And how did our workshops help and our individual counseling help uh, them with? And, and we have those assessments. And from those assessments, I can say that, you know, their uh, their mental well-being approved uh, improved um, after after coming to our workshops and it's not only one workshops you know we 
have uh, we start with emotional well-being workshops and there's resilience workshops and those who don't want to talk about their feelings or you know uh, do one-on-one -on -one with uh, 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 with therapists they can come they come to our um, the Mian Charge page uh, to read about our you know content and or come to our kickboxing classes and personal safety classes to get you know their uh, anger out. So there's so many ways to cope with uh, their you know their anxiety, stress, and their mental well-being. How are you doing in terms of funding and um, for people here who uh, are not based in Thailand um, and you know want to help? Uh, are there ways they can donate uh, to the Excel Hub? Um, if we have a page with a password, which is supposed to be here, um, I I can give it to you uh, because I'll, I'll send it in the in the Telegram as well, um, where you can go to our our page. How you can support? There's so many ways to support. We can start. Depends what you do. You're in the. I went to this noodle uh, community noodle group. Um, we're always connecting with. If there's a journalist, a female journalist, uh, whatever journalist, a transgender journalist, um, who wants to, you know, pitch something, and if that's something that is not uh, in our capacity, then we, you know, connect with. Um, other organizations, if it's your organizations and we connect with them, either that or, you know, you come directly to us, we can talk about, you know, how we can work together. Um, funding in 2021, not so good. 2022, not so good. 2023, we try to be sustainable. <laughs> so um, in terms of funding, those who are outside of Myanmar who, who you know, do not know anything about what's going on in Myanmar and uh, journalists in exile, you can always uh, contact uh, Exile Hub. And also, there's many more here, other organizations also. But you can, um, I'll come uh, to you <laughs> later. We can uh, share a telegram or a signal and emails. We don't have a business card for, for uh, safety. Uh, yes, hello, I am Sumo from the Data News Agency. Um, I am a um, journalist from Myanmar and been in exile uh, nearly two years. So uh, today I just want to uh, comment about that uh, our situation. As I mentioned, uh, Matizima, they says we have a long list uh, we uh, wish uh, need support. So yes, uh, our situation is now the big problem is how we sustainability in Thailand and how we survive for the next year and coming years. Actually, we have no answers. So we are still trying and we stay hope uh, a lot of the support. So uh, the journalists, uh, before the coup, the number of journalists is uh, very big. After the coup, that number is decreased due to the safety. So the journalists who flee from the countries, also they are they're still working in the hard condition and a lot of uh, financial problems and the income and the family cases. So now in this situation, uh, if there any support uh, they assess, the working journalist, maybe the professional journalist number may be more decreased. So in, uh, yes, uh, my comment, comment is, um, if they can support any more in coming years, Myanmar journalists will be on the list of dangerous professionals. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uman. Thank you. Hi, um, this is Juju from Frontier Myanmar. And um, I just have one um, um, question about how you take measurement, like how you, uh, what, what is the measurement you take before supporting each uh, journalist asking for the support or help? Um, uh, so wh what is the measurement that you take? Like, um, what's the condition that um, to qualify for your support? Well, like criteria. Yeah, yeah, some criteria that, um, that you take. Um, like I said, emergency support, it, um, it's not something that, you know, within our... How do you phrase this? 
you, it just happens. Uh, we are we just happen to first we we started with housing and everything else. Yes, that's something that we do. That's in our program. But with emergency uh, support, we just recently had somebody just had an accident. It's and it's not something that you can like ignore, you know, uh, because you know uh, they. They don't have any um, legal documentations or they don't have any money for that. So we try to connect the, the journalists with the other organizations that, you know, can support medical or, you know, any accidents happening. Uh, in terms of uh, criteria, we, we prioritize uh, women journalists, for sure, um, and freelancers, uh, CJs. And then uh, um, journalists working in big media houses, but rather smaller media houses, freelancers, women journalists than big media houses. Thank you, Madi Zimbar, for sharing what you've been doing, which is very amazing. Thank you for that. I'm Grace. I'm also, uh, I'm, I work for a Media Development Investment Fund. I work mainly with Myanmar Media. Most of our partners are Azai uh, Media as well. So I, what I want to comment is about the health, issue, health uh, you know, support that you mentioned. So there are two things that you know, the organization can support regarding the health, especially in Thailand. When people migrate to Thailand, the health is not free. It's very expensive, especially when the accident happened. So there are two different things. For those who are living, there are several journalists in here who live in Thailand as a student with a student visa. So for those, they can buy health insurance. But having the health insurance is very expensive. So for us, you know, like at MDIF, we provide health insurance for our partners uh, who hold the student visa. But we have our own limitation, right? We cannot, uh, you know, support for every journalist in here who lives with a student visa. So that's the one of the support that an other organization can consider for Myanmar journalists. And then the other support, you know, for those who are living, like as you said, uh, pink, who are living in Thailand with pink card or the 10 years visa, they are, there is the insurance available and you know, offered by the Thai government called Thai Universal Insurance. Most of the journalists, they do not know about that. So I think you know, since you have the platform, that is one thing that you can share among the design journalist network, especially for the free freelancer. So that one is not very expensive. It's quite cheap, and then, but you, they have to go through several, uh, several official process to get it. So that's what I want to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Magrace, for sharing. Um, we do um, we do provide um, M, M fund. There's a um, M fund in 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 uh, um, Thailand, but it's a long process. It's a <laughs> complicated. Even I don't have it. Uh, it's a long process, but it's um, useful for those who don't hold any any cards. You know, if you're in Mesot, if you are in in mess out with no cards, just police card. Police card is uh, like a, you pay a monthly 500, 600 baht uh, uh, to you know, Thai police. Um, even for those uh, can get uh, M fund, but it's quite difficult. We do try to get uh, those uh, M fund for our fellows. We we call our you know community journalists uh, our fellows, and uh, we we try that. But like Matt Gray said, it's quite limited and it's a long process and complicated process. So, yeah. I, I realize that um, medical insurance is quite, quite um, expensive and it's, it's uh, crucial actually. Even I'm, I'm considering these days, I don't have a medical insurance, so I'm like, I, I need to get that. <laughs> Just in case something happens, you never know, you know. I, I didn't ex uh, expect to get so many questions and comments, you know. I wasn't uh, ready for that, but thank you. Thank you for joining. I th thank you, guys. This is place.